So uh, obviously that changes everything. And Jim Scott and I are going to find out how's the hike in Banff's front ranges, and it's going to be a doozy. You have to walk through Mount Norkway Ski Hill quite a ways till you get to an actual trail. Uh, not well marked either, so uh, I'll share my GPS track. You're not going to get lost, just follow this road. Here's the first sign we're going to see up here actually, to kind of point us in the right direction. We're off to Mystic Junction today. Set ourselves up for the random zone past Flint's Park. This is a section the girls and I did on our sawback circuit. And it's the section that I lost on video. <laughs> God bless you GoPro, right? So let's go look at this sign. There it is. Good morning. We're coming your way. Road walking's over, into the trail we go. Another sign up here I'll show you. And uh, kind of nice to escape the ski hill area. All right, let's have a look at this. Right on track. The summer of bears continues. <laughs> Big old black bear just Looking down the trail at us. Was he looking at us? Yep, straight at me. So, off in the woods it went. And uh, obviously knows we're here now, but we'll be walking gingerly. Hey, bear. Hey. 40 Mile Creek, the big bridge. A little milestone for us. Ann's getting her picture. Intersection here. We've done, uh, well, it says we've done 7K. Yeah, I believe it. Well, interesting. And we're shooting for 16, right? The end? 16 today, and then uh, just three, I think, to Mount Coxcomb, which is FM 10, and that's we'll take a break and sit down. And uh, if you're going to Edith Pass, you'd go up that way. But we're not. We're going that way, and Scott's in front clearing the cobwebs. Woohoohoo! <laughs> keeping me warm. Seven point nine kilometers, according to my Gaia, Mount Coxcomb. So we are here. It's our big milestone. We'll stop and take a break. Uh, Scott's got to repack his pack because he's got a hard-sided bear canister in there that's uh, probably in the wrong place. These are uh, bear approved bear canisters are required out in the random zone. So, all right, we're gonna have a little break, and I'll try to show you around on the way out. This has changed a lot since the girls and I were here on our. Uh, Sawback circuit, nicely improved, and uh, even bear boxes now, instead of the bear pole that was here with the poop under it. <laughs> the scat that was under it was kind of funny, ironic. And there's a nice new Taj Mahal outhouse. That is a beauty. Um, yeah, really nice. Now, I'm just going to walk down here toward the trail and show you the map of the campsite. This would be another... Great one-nighter for the one-night stand playlist. So do add it to your list. If you uh, want to get your young family out, for example, for the first time, hikes like that, like this one, are a really good introduction to the backcountry. Easy, easy walking on the trail and a well taken care of campsite. As promised, there's the map. We were obviously up here to here and the tent pads are all sprinkled. Kind of, well, you can kind of see up in there if I zoom in uh, one of the tent pads. And these are um, tent pads with the like four by four lumber defining the space. So, all right, water source is down this spur trail, by the way. So Scott's gonna go fill up and then we're gonna head that way. Anybody else need to fill up? Finally, a few views. Certainly does get better from here on up to Flint's Park view wise. But you can see the smoke too. And uh, we're actually pretty appreciative of being in a canopy on the trail today in the woods because it's hot. Actually a heat warning as we start this hike in the Banff Canmore area. And uh, it's been one of those summers, hasn't it? Up here anyway. But it is good 
to be out. Getting pretty close to camp. And that's the gap there where the intersection is to go up over Mystic Pass. Smoke is, we think the smoke's starting to clear out a bit, which would be great. Just for views and of course for <laughs> exerting yourself when you exercise, but yeah, still beautiful. Big milestone for us because we're not far from camp. Here's the junction. If you want to head into the Mystic, Mystic Lake, Mystic Pass. There it is. We'll hit 40 mile summit tomorrow, but uh, right now we're going to hit the campsite. It's warm. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. Anyway, not too far up this trail. We'll be there and I'll show you that next. Happy to see this sign. <laughs> Spur trail to camp just down there. Hiking trail right there for the morning. And uh, there's our guidance, if you can see that with all the glare. So as always, I'm gonna take you down into the campsite and show you around once we are set up. Hoo -hoo -hoo. There's the outhouse, which I'll show you from a different angle. Here's a map of the camp. Right there. Okay, got that. Now down here, tent pads. There's one to my left, but it's in a nice little meadow. Near the brook, so you get some white noise, but you'd be in the sun most of the hot part of the day. You know, if you get in to get set up, so. That's it down there. Before I go that way, you can see me set up here. And the other tent pads are through this way. If you just follow the trail, uh, a little out of breath from coming uphill. <laughs> if you just follow that trail, it'll take you back to uh, three tent pads back there, total of five here. So, all right. Yes, that's the same tent pad the girls and I used. <laughs> okay, let's go this way. Come down here just a little further, you can see tent pad number one, and the outhouse is right up there. We'll go past tent pad number one, and as I recall, it's quite a walk to the uh, cooking and food storage area. So I won't, uh, won't bore you with that. <laughs> that bridge, if I also recall, is for a cutoff that joins up with the trail down from Mystic Pass. So it can get you in here without looping all the way around. A little bit of a shortcut if you're coming in that direction. So, all right, next stop, after this long walk, food storage. And as I promised, I'd show you the eating area once uh, those other gentlemen left. Looks pretty new. This is all pretty new since I was here. Beautiful new table. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and past Anne is the uh, new bear bin. So on the new grill. Too. Oh yes, this is fancy. So look on this side, the new fire pit. This is the new Parks Canada fire pit. She's full too. It needs a good digging out. But uh, and then on this side, look at that. Fancy, eh? Yep. Do you have the same logo on both sides? No, it's a different one back here. We'll oh, have to come check it out. Our permits hard at work. <laughs> Well, supper's complete, and we're going to turn in early and get an early start for what is supposed to be another hot day tomorrow. Always good to get up and out early, try to hike when it's cool, because, you know, the last few kilometers today, it was really hot and smoky, and that's, it's hard on you. It really is. So you get into camp and hydrate and get some electrolytes into you and all that stuff. Now, no trip planning today. I've been doing that on day one, typically on these longer trips, and I'll tell you why. Tomorrow's an easy one. We're going to Flint's Park and then beyond into the random camping zone and heading toward, in a couple of nights, Scotch Camp. But until I see the trail conditions when we cross out of this part of the park into the random zone, you know, we still have options. So tomorrow night, I'll take you through the plan, uh, what we're intending to do, and uh, we'll see if it matches up with, with is, you know, what actually is here on the video and the chapters. <laughs> but it's just, it's great to be out. I'm really excited to explore this other random section of Banff National Park after I did the Clearwater Radio Circuit. And great to have these great friends with me as well. So an early night and early to rise. I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, day two of our adventures in the front ranges of Banff. And when I say adventures, they're going to be adventures. And we don't even know really where the adventure is going to take us. Certainly do have a rough idea, which I said a few seconds ago in the video. I'll share with you later. 
Uh, and I'll try to show you the map. It's hard to do out here without some sort of tripod or something to actually like show you this big Nat Geo map, right? But today, pretty simple, as I said, Flint's Park is our goal, and then beyond a couple of uh, three, whatever the whatever the kilometers are to get to the random zone. And there's a Ford there and some intel from Phil and uh, satellite and stuff. I think we'll be able to find three uh, places for tents. And then, uh, you know, we'll get set up and I'll take you through everything. So we've already packed up because the eating area where the food storage is is so far away. We've already packed up and we're going to head down there and had some, uh, have some breakfast and then hit the trail. Back out to the spur from the spur trail to the trail. And uh, we're heading up there this way. Should be a... Go ahead, guys. Should be a pretty gradual uphill from memory to uh, 40 Mile Summit. Who's looking forward to a climb? <laughs> we love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, this, <laughs> this bridge has seen better days. Oh, and there's why. A tree came down. Took her out. Well, we'll pick our way through. It's nice and dry. Starting to make our way out of the woods, which is nice because uh, I haven't shown you much because, well, I gotta watch my footing here. It's been a lot of woods walking. And uh, this is also where the horse trail joins up with the hiker trail. Once I get there, I'll just show you that real quick in case you're coming the other way. All right, here it is, just so you know. All right, there it is. Yeah, so hiker camp is this way, or hiker camp, hiker trail. The horse trail, let me just back up is that way and you could probably take it but it's hot so the walk in the woods not too bad and we're probably just about a kilometer and change away from 40 miles summit and then the views improve, improve drastically so we're all looking forward to that yes, we are. <laughs> starting to emerge into the meadows not quite to the summit probably 500 meters i'm gonna guess but you start getting views opening up. It makes the walking a lot easier. This is gorgeous. I remember it really well. When the girls and I emerged on our Sawback Circuit hike, which of course is here on the channel. <laughs> Hello, beautiful. I missed you. Wow. 40 mile summit right here at this uh, crest and the Vermilion Range. Off to the right and straight ahead. And oh my goodness me. That is spectacular. <laughs> Whew. Wow. Now before I lose my backward view, there comes the gang from where we've been. Oh baby, this. After two days basically of woods walking. <laughs> This is amazing. And yes, the perma smile is here. Can't wait for them to see it. Woo -hoo! Making our way toward the tree line. We're gonna try to find some shade when we get there and have a little break before we head down to Flint's Park. Wonder if Flint will be there. What do you think? Maybe. Well, Let him go. <laughs> go to Flint. we'll find out soon. I'll zoom in for you here. Quick view of Sawback Lake. We're not going in because we're not camping there, and also you can't swim in it. Whirling disease still prevalent out here. So we're going to uh, continue up the trail and look for the trail that goes right and not the one that goes down into the valley, but I'll zoom back out just to give you some scope. Look at that meadow down there in that valley. It's quite a walk up there actually, but beautiful. We're making our way down and I remember this being steep and Scott just said what the girls and I said when we were out here years ago, this would be a horrible climb up <laughs> and it would be steep and relentless. Woo, you know, it doesn't show up on video. You're looking at it going, oh, that doesn't look so bad. Trust me, really. Trust me. Made our way down the steep climb to the river, creek, whatever. And here's a bridge, which we're gonna take. Up in this valley, of course, I just showed you a second ago, the view of the lake, Sawback Lake. We're just gonna go up here and intersect, turn right, and keep heading towards Lens Park. This way. 
And here's the sign. Let's just quick show you. So I said we're gonna go right that way first. For your pleasure. Milestone, Flint's Park Warden's Cabin. And look at the backdrop behind it. I'm gonna show you the cabin when I get there, but my goodness, this, look at that. Stunning. There'll be more to see. There'll be a little bit of panorama for you when I get to the cabin, but uh, there's also a bookable campsite here. Flint's Park. Uh, I don't know how many tent pads, sorry, but uh, it's here as well. And a favorite for folks doing what we're doing, heading off into the Netherland. We didn't book because we thought we wanted to have a bit of a longer day to shorten tomorrow. So we still got a bit of work to do, a couple, half, two and a half kilometers maybe, or so, up the random zone. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you that in just a second. Give me a quick shot of this sign. Oh boy, she's, uh, she's worn. <laughs> Cascade Valley left from here as I look this way and of course the uh, campsite here also down that way and that way is up to uh, Block Lakes Junction and Badger Pass and we have to figure out which way we're going to connect up the North Cascade I think we make a uh, left after we cross the river catch that trail a bit toward Block Lakes we'll explore First, I'm going to show you around this lovely spot. A little firewood shed, solar, as I've shown you a lot this year in Banff. All the warden's cabins seem to have solar installed now, which is cool. Scott said, uh, well, here's the front door. Scott said, that's not the welcome mat. <laughs> so this is a lovely little spot. A little different than the last time I was here, from what I remember. There it is, Flint's Park Cabin. Some equipment over here, nice pen for the horses, and the all-important outhouse. So I'm gonna take a short little look around, get some pictures, and uh, find our next trail, which is definitely in the vicinity of the Cascade River. We gotta head up the North Cascade, so I guess we're gonna have to look for the drain, probably, where they meet. Look at this view. When you cross that bridge and go visit the warden's cabin, come back up, make a left from the bridge, probably a hundred meters or more, a little bit more. That's where we're going, North Fork Pass and the Cascade Valley. But tonight, not tonight, huh? not tonight, we're heading up to the river where there's a ford and we're going to find a place to camp. Here, Chevy. <laughs> <laughs> We're not far from where we can hope to find camp and the willows are getting us now. Woo. All right, after some epic willows, we're coming down to the uh, North Cascade. You can hear it flowing pretty good, which bodes well for our evening. But what we really need for our evening to be well our three flat places to camp and I think boy oh gosh that might be it right there I'll talk about trip planning soon but this is the only night where we're truly going to uh, what I'll call random camp because we're going to try to use horse camps that we know the locations of so what you're looking for in a place like this is maybe some semi-flat gravel I mean there's a tent pad there for sure and uh, we need three we got some good flowing water. So what we'll do is we're going to take some time, get the packs off, take a break and look around. And uh, once we're set up, I'll give you a little shot of our random camp. All right, little shot of camp. <laughs> There's not much to show you. Three tents on the gravel. We did look at a spot just up here that my friend Phil had mentioned uh, to us. And we went and Jim and I went and looked at it. And it's a lovely little spot on the grass. But... It was really kind of tricky to get there with our backpacks, you know, through some really not, you know, willowy alders, lots of pointy stuff. And we thought, well, eh, we'll just set up on the gravel, which means our Ford will be right about here, there, over there, it's past the close in the morning. 
So you have clothes everywhere. We're, uh, everybody's washed up and gotten organized. So anyway, we're going to have a little supper and then I'm going to do a quick trip planning. Let you know what our plan is and what our plan B may have to be. More on that next. My tent, my view, and my map table. Warning, this will be shaky because I have to get down here on my hands and knees to show you the trip plan. So we started here, as you know, at Mount Norquay. And we followed the 40 mile creek trail up to Mystic Junction last night. Good first day because everybody was traveling except me. They came and met me in Banff and off we go. Today, as you just saw, we came up this way, uh, over a 40 mile summit, past Flint's Park, uh, the warden's cabin anyway, and up here into the random zone, which is where we are tonight. So what's the plan from here? Well, the real plan is to come up all the way up the Cascade North Fork Trail intersect the Panther River and you see that dot that's a horse grazing area and old camp I'm gonna flash up on the screen a PDF we have this is from Banff National Park this shows the horse grazing areas and places you can camp if you're horsemen of course we can use them it's a random camping zone and we plan to use these places because we might be able to tuck in and have good little campsites uh, with some nice uh, you know kind of soft bottoms and things like that following day we're gonna go up the Cascade Valley Trail we're gonna go over Snow Creek Summit we're going to go all the way up here to something I can't wait to see, Scotch Camp. Now, I'm going to get down here a little bit on my hands and knees and show you that if you watch my Clearwater Red Deer video, I came down this trail and intersected the Red Deer River Trail. I looked for a camp, I turned left and went this way, and didn't I find an old camp across the Red Deer River from Scotch Camp? Yes, on the video, I showed a, uh, well, looked like a very... Uh, well-worn horse crossing and indeed it goes over to the Scotch Camp area. After our night at Scotch Camp it's make or break because after we leave Scotch Camp big old bridge across the Red Deer River no problem but if I want to get down here to the Elkhorn, Elkhorn Summit Trail which I do I have to ford the Red Deer River as my good friend Brian Patton said the other day via email that ford could be daunting but let's say we get across we're gonna go down the Elkhorn Trail to probably this area where you see that circle. That's another horse camp. We're gonna make our way through the shortcut from the uh, Panther River over to the Dormer River Trail. And we're gonna follow the Dormer River Trail all the way over Dormer Pass and back into the non-random zone at Stony Creek on our last night and then back to Norquay in a beautiful loop with a combination of two nights in the non-random zone and every other night with flexibility. Flexibility is key because what if we can't get across this ford? We're going to backtrack. We're going to come all the way back to here, okay, where we're going to stay tomorrow night. And then we're going to go this way. Down the Panther, we know it's just been cleared, which is amazing. We're going to hit the shortcut again, and we'll just continue on to Dormer Pass and back the way we came. All of that, of course, dependent on trail conditions, other water conditions, washouts, and things like that. The great thing about being in the random zone is you have flexibility, you're able to change your plans, you can be slower or faster, and you can cater your pace and your comfort level to everybody in the group. So there it is, our tour of the front ranges. That's the plan A, that's the plan B, and you already know what happened. We don't, so we've got some work to do. Well, a little view behind me of the North Cascade River, and that's where we're heading up tomorrow. Then we'll make a big old right at the Panther River. And well, I showed you earlier where we're headed. I hope the trip planning made sense. It's, it's kind of a complicated trip because it's so long, 145 kilometers. And I wanted to show you on a map kind of what we're putting together. Cause this isn't like, you know, like the Clearwater Red Deer or uh, the Dolomite Circuit. These aren't named trails in the Canadian Rockies Trail Guide. So we're putting this big loop together uh, ourselves. And I just kind of wanted you to see where we were going on the Nat Geo map. So. We're going to uh, get cleaned up, get our bear storage taken care of. Of course, out here you have to have approved bear storage containers. Look them up at the Interagency Grizzly Committee website or check with Banff. Uh, we've got some ursacs and some bear canisters here. It's a mix. Learn how to use them and get them far away from your tents, and that's what we're up to now. Then we're going to turn in early and try to get out early tomorrow because we might be, uh, might be running from some weather as we get into the Panther uh, Valley. So... You know, we'll see what happens and it's going to bring a big change in temperature which is good because the last two days have been h-o-t <laughs> anyway five seconds for you as i've been saying all summer and eight hours of sleep for me we'll all see you in the morning morning day three and we're down to three uh, scott said something come up 
And after a very lengthy discussion, he's going to head back to the non-random zone, which is only a couple of kilometers from here, and make his way back to his car and take care of uh, take care of what he's got to take care of. So we've decided we'll continue on, and uh, I'll explain that decision to you a little later uh, on this day, because I want you to understand how to how to make those decisions in the backcountry and what the criteria are and uh, things like that. So. Anyway, that's a uh, little update this morning. That's why I'm a little late doing the morning. But the first thing we have to do is cross there. Oh, well, actually, it's that way. <laughs> Find the right direction, Stu. Well, the fording has begun. A little deeper than it looks. Wow. Here comes the fort cam. Oh, it looks deep and cold. Good morning. Oh my gosh, yes. Oh, that would have felt good yesterday afternoon with the heat. Look at this. Woo! At least you can see the bottom, right? That's helpful. Maybe she moves there. Oh, man. Oh, it's cold! Oh. We've just come up here not too far from where we camped and uh, some old sort of structure. Although there's a tree growing right in the middle of it. Fascinating. A little ways further up, there's another one. Interesting. If you know what these are, post it below. Or shoot me an email. I'll put it in the description. I hope you can see the overlapping bridges up there. There's one close to us on the left, but then there's one on the right. And that's what we're gonna go up and around to the right and drop into the Panther Valley. Still some work to do and it's uh, incredibly smoky today. In fact, I would have told you this morning, uh, last night was incredibly smoky in camp. It just settled in the valley and we were, <laughs> we were all coughing and hacking. I'm still pretty stuffed up this morning. So, uh, I mean, it's just reality out here now, but, and it does obscure the view, but we're going that way eventually. <laughs> a little bit of a crossing here. We hope we can rock up or at least not go above our ankles. Not really worthy of the Ford cam, so I'll spare you the flashy lights. Oh yeah, I think we can rock up this. Good. We've started our climb. We know we're gonna have some steep up ahead. Over four kilometers of pretty easy walking, really. And uh, you can see the ridge ahead of me, up and around that. So we've got our raincoats on, spitting. And uh, that'll just make us a little warmer as we go up these hills. I say I always look back, but <laughs> I'll zoom in there. Maybe you can see something. It is definitely smoky. That's a good indication there of uh, just how much. Well, as you can tell, it's pouring and we're getting more exposed. This is hours ahead of what Garmin predicted, hours. And I will say it's been pretty awful this summer. I'll have a story to tell you a little later, but right now we gotta keep going. This is neat. You find beauty in everything, right? I mean, we've, it's, uh, we've opened up into this and look how cool that is. And I'm pretty sure we're heading around to the right. What do you think, guys? Yes? I yeah, think so. I think so too. We're getting there. We're starting to emerge. And uh, I'll just pan for you over this way. Some views. Even a little blue sky starting to pop in. So we were, uh, we were rained on pretty good. So that would be lovely as well. Still some work to do though. ridge and then around that but the trail that we're on which is of course the only trail up here does not follow the map in this area so it's a bit confusing like it has been out here in Banff all summer quite frankly uh, with the maps so but yeah that's uh, I'll give you a little bit of shot of that if I can when I get up here that's amazing And 
just said, always look behind. Super steep. This probably marks, uh, this gear probably marks the way down for folks coming the other way here to find the trail. I'm gonna set out, see if we can find it. And just went over to what I was looking at too, it's just some sort of rock on top of a rock. Could be a cairn. But we know we're going this way. So uh, we'll fan out and see if we can find another cairn. We continue to cut a bit left here from the drainage on this old track. So I'm going to think we're in the right spot now. But still some work to do in this mist. You can kind of taste it when you breathe in. Clouds. Good hydration. <laughs> it's amazing walking in the mist. I mean, we we're just talking about mist and views, but it's quite an experience. This must be where we peek out and head down toward the Panther. But uh, <laughs> there's not much to see. Quite the wildlife camera, quite the contraption to shelter it, too. Nice job, team. And we've all just waved. <laughs> different landscape on this side. Look over here. <laughs> I'm sure we could see a lot more if it wasn't foggy, obviously. Another cairn for you. So, helping us in the fog for sure. Or should I say the cloud that we're in. I think we're just making our way down under this cloud and finally a view. Oh baby, I've waited a long time to see you. Hello. Now, I'll look at you in a little more detail here. Once I pick my way down through this. Ooh. Ann and Jim coming down. We'll call that the headwaters of the Panther River. And there's a cairn. Yeah, amazing. Look at this. I feel wild. Literally. So the team just noticed this. The trail used to go through there. This can't be that old then. This slide. Because there definitely was a, a beaten path through there. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Glad we weren't coming down then. Oh. Super steady descent after we crossed over the river again. And it's been pretty good downhill. You can kind of see where we're going. You can see the two tree lines. Get down there in the meadow, I would think. Keep heading down the Panther River. Finally descending out of the woods. Jim made a joke. Of, we're going to be at sea level at this if we keep going. <laughs> it was a long way down, but look at this. Hello. I've just descended a little panorama. Let me start over here. Look at this beauty. Look at that. And then, uh, well, I've shown you this. I'm a little bit shot in clouds, unfortunately. But wow. Wow, and it feels wild, too. It's just awesome. Love it. One last look behind as we head toward the corner. Pushed back for a while and willows that were over our heads. And uh, there's another trail down here. There's three or four trails up there that branch off, but we decided to come down by the river. Look, that's definitely a track. My suggestion is stay by the river through this section and you will find this, which in my opinion is the trail. The map, forget about it. Coming up to a rock slide and we've, uh, we've intersected several trails where there are clear tracks to follow, and then they just stop. I mean, we know, we know we're, we're following the river, which is why we're down by the river, but hopefully up here we'll see something a little more, a little more defined. No cairns to be seen. So we'll keep following the river until we pick something up. 
We have been uh, bushwhacking. We can't, uh, there's so many trails back there, we don't know, we just uh, decided to follow the river. And eventually we know we're gonna have to be on that side of it for a while. I mean, you're cliffed out over here. Uh, Garmin's got us on this side coming down right about here. Okay. And then Gaia and uh, Backroads Mapbooks Canada have, us, have had us over there for a long time. So if you know the route, comment below. But when you get into a situation like this, we know we're following the river, so follow the river. Only one way to go. So uh, from the uh, meadow, we spied a cut coming across here, and it looks like the trail. What a lovely, what has it been, 45 minutes? <laughs> Seems longer. Let's hope this, uh, let's hope that's the end of that. But look at that view. Huh? Gorgeous. I'll try to get you a better shot of this, but look at this cliff. And then there's a, there's a ridge over there. It must be game trail. It's really well defined. There's an extremely good trail here. Yeah, and we're on a good a good trail here as well. So we're descending. We're probably going to have to cross again, and then it should just be a hop, skip, and a jump to uh, the horse camp area. We're gonna we're gonna bed down for the night. Just made our last river ford. And uh, put a little over a kilometer to that 5k from the junction mark, where there's supposed to be an old camp, according to the Banff National Park, for sure. Rain's picked up a little bit again, but we have horse hooves in the mud, and we're pretty happy because the trail back there was extremely sketchy. Worst one I've ever seen, actually. Second only to some areas around Motor Creek. <laughs> anyway, this is much better to find. And we're feeling jubilant at this point. Well, this is turned pretty ugly. We finally found the trail again. It's been a lot of route finding today, which is no big deal, but had no weather left us. So now we're going to find a place for camp and get warm again. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. <laughs> Enough said. Another shot of where we tucked in along the river and we were in a hurry to tuck in uh, just as we were well first of all we think we missed the horse camp uh we got off trail there, well first of all there was no trail i mean going in the direction we were coming obviously there, there was no trail we, we were well there were actually lots of trails none of which seemed to lead us in the direction we were going so finally when we found the horse hooves i think had we turned around and gone back we might have found the horse camp which would have given us uh, some shelter because just as we were setting up our tents Driving rain, sideways rain, single digit temperatures, and I'm telling you, tropical force storm winds. No exaggeration, I wouldn't do that. I've, uh, like, I've been snowed on and hailed on and winded on out here, but this was epic. And of course, then we got cold. So I just emerged from my sleeping bag, so I'm not uh, hypothermic. And just wanna show you the trails way up there. So we had to descend and get onto this little ridge. Temperature expected to plummet tonight. I saw the little snow flurry signal, uh, signals, uh, symbol rather, uh, on my Garmin weather, which hasn't been great because we weren't supposed to have any weather until five o'clock-ish. And of course, we've had it all day. So uh, yeah, a little bit later, I'll just quickly sum up what, uh, what happened with Scott this morning. And we're gonna have a family discussion and uh, well, look at our options because I think at this point, plan A is probably not something that makes a lot of sense after getting soaking wet and more of that on the way. So we've got other options. I always plan hikes with multiple exit points or options. So we're gonna discuss that. And if I know anything tonight, of course I'll fill you in, but uh, more to share after we have some supper. Okay, a few quick updates. Uh, Scott left this morning, had to, and uh, you know we debated you know, accompanying him out and rescheduling and stuff, but uh, he said, no, of course. He's a very experienced backpacker, having done you know, a lot of solo stuff in remote areas. Uh, he does winter ski-ins and, and, and camps, and of course you've seen him on the channel. It, you know, him getting back in a very busy area of the park was not something we were concerned about. Plus, you know, he's a GPS communicator, so, you know, really, really no big deal. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll hook up with him probably at the end of this hike when we get there. 
Um, and why are we here? Why are we in the front ranges of Banff? I just finished the Clearwater Red Deer Circuit. Now I'm looking to be on the other side of the Red Deer, and it's because we had a big hike planned out to South Esk Lake in Jasper National Park, a place I've been wanting to get to for years. And um, we planned this trip and booked it a long time ago when we, when reservations were available. And of course, a big snowstorm hit in June and the devastation of, uh, you know, fully leaved deciduous trees all over the trail is epic. And just before we were thinking of heading out, I'm talking like, what, maybe 10 days? Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Um, we got reports online, Facebook stuff, groups of the vast, epic deadfall. Uh, one crew went out for 12 days and went through 59 tanks of chainsaw gas. I mean, just epic and the section we needed between let's say medicine tent and south esk trail intersection hadn't been touched a group finished the south boundary and and it was and just posted you know, don't do it I, I literally said can we get through he goes you might <laughs> but then of course what would south esk trail be like so the only thing available at that point in time of course in the dead of summer in banff or jasper national park is the random zone of banff so this is an area I've always wanted to explore. I've always wanted to see the Panther River Valley. And we decided to put this trip together. But you have to be flexible. And today was pretty rough for us. And I'll touch on that when we wrap up. But, um, you know, after Scott left and we started hiking, I said, yeah, I think we'll forget about Scotch Camp and that ford of the Red Deer River that could be pretty tough. Why don't we just keep going down the Panther? And so that's kind of been our plan. Go down the Panther to Dorma Pass and then cut up that way and take our good old time because we have some extra nights to kill out here before we hit the bookable area of Banff National Park. So we're being flexible. And of course, we're back in the tent now because of the rain today, which was crazy. And I'll touch on all of that and what we're thinking we might do when I wrap things up next. Well, that's a wrap on day three. It wasn't the day we expected in so many ways, uh, including the weather. Oh my goodness me. We got up, uh, you know, that unnamed pass, we're getting close to the approach and it's driving down rain. We're hiding under trees. The wind is whipping. The smoke is coming in. You know, you expect that. But after uh, weeks of heat here, that's a huge change in single digit temperatures. Um, then, of course, you know, we couldn't find this old camp at the 5K mark from the intersection. And here's why. The trail on the other side of that is, you know, it's pretty sketchy. And we're coming that way. And when we finally intersected the real track with the horse hooves, we were thrilled, but we were already probably past where the camp was. And we kept coming in this direction. And I showed you the clips looking, oh, maybe it's on this rise. Maybe it's over here. <laughs> if we turned around, or I had UTM coordinates, of course, but if and they weren't provided by this um, PDF I showed you, um, we would have turned around and we would have had a much different evening. So, um, you know, it's just one of those days. And so I think what probably we'll do tomorrow is meander down the panther a little bit and try to find a great spot to hang some stuff up and dry off the wet things because, you know, the dry things we have to put on tomorrow are going to end up being wet from the willows and all that kind of stuff. And we don't want to get into a situation where everything's wet when the temperatures aren't going to be as warm as 30 anymore uh, and maybe not a lot of sun, just some cloud because you have to dry things off. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be super flexible. Try to have a short day tomorrow and then assess whether we're going to continue down the Panther and up over Dormer Pass or maybe the Cascade Trail and head back that way and explore uh, is it Wigmore Lake. I'll flash it up the lake. Uh, just areas like that. And I've said before, we're in random zone. We have flexibility. We have our permits. And we can take our time and live in the moment. So we're going to do that. Uh, this next moment when the rain stops is cleanup time and then sleepy time. We'll see you in the morning. Good morning, day four, and look up. We're socked in. <laughs> like we literally are socked in. We heard a plane go over, and Ann made a good point that maybe we're just kind of, uh, you know, stuck below some clouds. So let's hope so, because we need to dry some stuff off. Everything's very wet and damp, uh, which is not atypical out here. But as I said a few seconds ago in the video, and overnight, uh, last night for me, I mean, you know, you go from 30 to this, it's like, whoa. But uh, we did get soaking wet, no question about it. So we're going to take a short day which, you know, like I said, we can. And go down to the intersections here. There's a patrol cabin, I think, or something down there at some point, uh, which we can see on satellite. 
and we're going to find some space near there, probably across the river from it, uh, actually. And uh, just hope the sun comes out so we can dry everything and then ponder our next moves. We have options from there, and this is how I plan trips. I've said it many times. Uh, from there, we can head down the Panther and then up over Dormer, or from there, we can just head up Cascade. Linger a bit, maybe at the lake, and then uh, head back into the non-random zone of Banff, and the trip will end early, but, I mean, we're still getting an excellent experience and uh, having a lot of fun, so, you know, you, again, it's conditions, right? So uh, we slept in, we're getting breakfast going and coffee. We're gonna have to uh, cross this cold beast and get up back on that, uh, there it is, back up on that uh, ridge. And the trail should be pretty darn good down to the intersection. So I'll show you that in a second. One last shot up the valley and as I swing around here, a little blue sky. Come on, baby. Yeah, it's brightening up a little bit. And that's our plan, just down to the intersection to find a nice place to camp. And, uh, well, it's actually this way. You can actually see the confluence of the uh, valleys here, four corners, basically. And we're going to dry a bunch of stuff up and plot our next moves. But first, the Ford Cam. All right, time for the Ford Cam this morning. Well, I got, you know what? There would have been so many Ford Cams yesterday, I just stopped. It was, uh, <laughs> it was epic. Epic Fording yesterday. Now, my boots and socks are already soaking wet. One last shot of our little get out of the rain random camp. <laughs> I wouldn't rate it five stars, would you? Not five. No, not five, but it worked. I and mean, that's all you're looking for. Okay. That way. We were just saying this reminds us of shale banks on the north boundary. Look at that. One way and then the other, and then the other. Or then back again. <laughs> amazing. Speaking of amazing. Look at this valley. And if you look closely, just in the center of the frame now, you can see kind of the four corners that we're heading to. We just walked up from the trail trying to figure out if we were correct yesterday or incorrect. This is a horse camp. And it's probably, might be a little more than half a kilometer from the intersection, but it depends on which intersection they're talking about. And you can see there's infrastructure uh back in here wood all bucked up and uh even down under that tree lots of fairly fresh horse poop where they probably had their horses overnight so in the pdf i flashed up earlier there's a page i uh i didn't have a picture of but i certainly had uh the pdf with me but it didn't download from iCloud. so uh, Anne looked at a picture on her phone and thought it said half a or five kilometers from from the intersection it could have said 0.5 and maybe we were just thinking, oh, it's five kilometers from that intersection for the horse camp. But this is just over half a kilometer, I would say, from the intersection. And it makes perfect sense because, you know, it's an intersection. So you put your horse camp, you know, close to that in case it depends what route you're going to follow, right? So maybe yesterday we were kind of on a wild goose chase. And this should have been our destination. I'm going to look at that PDF and uh, talk to the park. And I'm going to flash up right now, which is correct from the intersection. Here it is. So there you go. Even a kind of place to hang some food. Although, well, maybe not quite high enough. <laughs> Would have been a lovely spot to spend the night in the uh, storm we had, but I've UTM'd it for you. If you need it, let me know. As I say, I always look back. Gorgeous now with the sun. We're ready to dry some stuff off and get warm. Look at this. I'll show you these rapids here in a minute. And up here, see part of the buildings that are over there. We think it's a warden's cabin of some sort, pretty sure. There it is, part of the Jiggly. We're heading down that way somewhere. Holy steep descent. Wow. We came up high to get a perspective and we can see an old bridge. Here we go. It was uh, down there at one point. I can also see a trail going off that way. 
And as you can see a trail going off that way, old tread. So we're gonna head down that way and uh, that's our valley maybe. Well, that's our valley maybe. <laughs> we haven't decided yet. More on that later. Brace yourself, here comes the Ford camp. to do and then we have to find some trail intersections so we can uh, make a decision what we're doing tomorrow I mean obviously it's up clear water trail or down panther so we're gonna tuck in around here and have a little break and dry some stuff off and then look for a place to camp because you know you can't camp there obviously no we're not camping here but we are drying here <laughs> It's early in the day, we're taking a nice long break. This is the perfect place to dry everything. And I mean everything. Everything was damp. You do your best to protect everything in your backpack, of course, from getting wet, but it does get super damp. Then, of course, we did have some soaking, wringing wet stuff. So, little break here, at least an hour, have some lunch, and then uh, decide if we're going that way or if we're going down that way front of the warden's cabin no name on this one i'll have to flash it up when i find it and there look at that they that looks like a trail marker to me that's interesting that that would be there there is a sign i'll show you after just across the river come back here give you a little shot around i always like to show you the warden's cabins this one is spectacular which is surprising it's not got a big old name on it oh look oh yeah i've got the bear welcome mat and uh Clean your boots before you go in. Up back this way is the uh, is the privy, the outhouse, and it has a ladies' sign on it, which I thought was funny. Some wood all cut up for them here, and then down this road, I'll take you down there, is uh, where the horses are, and it's uh, well, it's quite a ways away actually. So I've just come down from there. You can see there's a road, and there's a road on the other side that goes down the Panther, like a cart path or something. So finishing up the tour for you down this way you're going to see that outbuilding i showed you and i'm going to guess the horse pens yep yeah there they are and a weather station off in the distance as well i'll fast forward this for you so you don't have to listen to me walk in my camp shoot that is indeed the horse shed and the horse pen no poop this year Have a look at this weather station. I want to show you something that I think uh, pretty neat. Beautiful area for the horses. Nice fence, well maintained. There's a weather station, I'm assuming. And just down the valley, and I'm going to zoom in, show you a couple things. Pretty sure that's Gable Mountain off in the distance. And look at that. That would be some pretty fresh snow, I would say. Um, get from last night's horrific rains. There's your freeze level. And as I pan around slowly past the weather station, if you look way off in the distance, way down in there, you can probably see the fence for the horses continuing on. And then this view, panning back out, watch yourself. And there we are. Look at that. And boom, there you go. Camp. Just a little ways down. We're a little tucked in from the, uh, from the wind, which was a good idea that Anna Jim had. And I'm over here with my view. Keep panning this way. What a view it is. Wow. Look at her that way. I'm gonna go up a little bit. And that way. And of course, up that way. So we're gonna uh, keep discussing our options. I'll explain that to you in a bit. We're also gonna have some supper. It's about that time. Well, we've had a great supper and uh, we still haven't decided what to do. <laughs> so, uh, it's, listen, it's a simple thing. We either go down the Panther and then over Dormer Pass and come out that way or we head up Cascade. And the real uh, killer now is the weather. So, uh, the Garmin weather's been really bad all summer, honest predictions. It's just been terrible. And I learned on my Clearwater Red Deer circuit hike to ask somebody who's not outside using Garmin, 
what the weather looks like because it tends to be more accurate. So we've messaged, uh, today I messaged Olivia, yesterday it was Evelyn, and uh, we've also reached out to some of Ann and Jim's friends and we're just gonna wait back and hear about the weather because there is some rain coming and it might hit us just like it did yesterday as we're heading up over a pass. So with options, we're gonna get all the information we can and we'll make a decision and I'll let you know in the morning. Until then, sleep well. Morning, day five. Big change overnight in plans. So uh, we were checking the weather, as I think I mentioned as I uh, wrapped up yesterday. And uh, well, we found out that Ann and Jim's house in BC is under threat of the uh, wildfire activity there. Uh, serious threat. And they're under, if they were there, they were on a mandatory evacuation order. So uh, obviously that changes everything and we have to get out. So we can go up, you know, go up Cascade to Wigmore Lake and down and uh, do about 25k today and then another 20k tomorrow and get them out so they can and get back and try to get their personal belongings and stuff if possible uh they were under an evac order weeks ago or a month ago of some time ago uh, when we were supposed to be heading out to south esk lake and as i mentioned earlier in the video we changed to this uh this trip and now uh but but then things cleared up and they felt comfortable leaving well things have changed so Day five, we need to do about 25K and get, get close enough to the trailhead to get out tomorrow. Uh, this was kind of our plan C, actually, taking this trail, depending on weather. We had kind of settled on going down the Panther and then up over Dormer Pass and out. Still would probably be a day early from our scheduled uh, trip. But when we received that information last night, um, it's more like our plan C, which is the Cascade Wigmore Lake down. And uh, yeah, one last look at the Windy Warden cabin. The original one... Uh, I think built in 1915, is now at the Museum of Banff. And uh, this one was built in the 50s. According to Brian and Bart and the Canadian Rockies Trail Guard, there's a nuclear bomb shelter here. <laughs> Protect the wardens. Up here, lots of damage on this roof too. So, and yeah, frosty. Look at that. Tis the season. But to go from, what did I say a couple days ago? To go from 30 something to this practically overnight. Welcome to the mountains. Oh, let's go draw a happy face. Just up from the uh, crossing there, the sign I mentioned yesterday. We're heading right, of course, uh, according to that sign, to the Flint Park Valley, but then beyond. And uh, look at the hiking possibilities from here. <laughs> so uh, our, our hiking today, Upper Cascade Valley Trail. And uh, hope she's good to us. Jim just saw a fish go by as we crossed this river. <laughs> Chilly morning for a fish. You can see the cut there, the old fire road, the Cascade Fire Road, which is kind of what we're on, of course. Uh, let's zoom around here and start walking. I've got some miles to make today. Anyway, uh, you know, down toward Minnewanka, you can still bike a good section of this. But up here, no. Hello, Willows. Frosty morning for you too, I see. Lots of rock hops this morning. Not worthy, of course, of the Ford cam. <laughs> At least not yet. Jim was just saying, no wonder we saw fish, or he saw fish. Look at this. This is beautiful. We found the house. <laughs> Busy beavers. Even dams up here. Coming up to Wigmore Lake, which then feeds Wigmore Creek, which we're going to follow. And we had thought of this as a camping spot in our Plan C. Plan C would not have included. Uh... Let's start that again. 
Bar Lake. Have we thought of camping here? I don't think we probably could have. We were talking about our plan C. Now we're on plan D. <laughs> anyway, despite it all, everybody's in good spirits. And why wouldn't you be? It's gorgeous. Look at this. Wigmore Lake, altitude 6,500 feet. Did you call that a Pulaski? Yeah. We're just surmising maybe it was left here to punch down that beaver dam. So, I mean, because that's, that's the trail. So this will be interesting. However, I think from here, mostly downhill. Sure, it's true. <laughs> a little bit of a trail here, not sure for how long. I've had to climb up in that and around. We're not the first ones to do it, but uh, get you a wind going. No, looks like we're doing it again. <laughs> Absolutely endless valley. Stunning this morning. I'm, uh, I'm glad we're hiking it in this direction, to be honest, because it's mostly downhill to the next intersection. And I think to uh, where we plan to stop tonight. Tomorrow morning will be a pretty good climb out of there as we head back to Norquay, but uh, it's been easy walking along the old fire road for the most part. And the views have been, well, I mean, I just find that spectacular. Bighorn Lake, that way. Jim says three miles. Three miles? Yeah. Okay. Well, there, there it is. Looks like it might be really nice up there if you get up there. Lake's right up against, uh, looks like it's kind of in a, like at a wall or something on the map. Anyway, we've hit a bit of a wall, so we're gonna have a little break. Water up. Coming down here, we got some more river fording to do, it looks like. And probably back again. Probably a double Ford here. Yeah, somebody tried to sneak through and around. Reminds me of the south boundary in Jasper. So you can see the trail washed out along there, basically. There, there it is up there. Oh, sorry, I'm, you're on the, there it is up there. Got washed out to here. We just picked our way along the edge. A little bushwhacking. Now a little layer adjustments. It's getting warm. So this is something I'll show you in a sec. I'd camp there, but there's a uh, marker there, historical. Is this more whirling disease? No, fishing, boating, swimming. In the Cuthead Lake and Cuthead Creek. Wading across to stay on the official trail if permitted, where there are no bridges. Hmm. Whirling disease. Whirling disease. Cuthead College. This site was originally a warden station, then developed into a work camp for conscientious objectors during World War II. In 1954, the first organized school for wardens was held here, and classes continued into the 1960s. The site was ideally located for training in climbing and rescue, horsemanship, firefighting, and other field skills. A practice ski hill is still visible across the road. Well, let's have a look. Yeah, that's a bunny hill. Here's our intersection. If you go right here, you go up to Flint's Park and Flint's Park Warden's Cabin. Just before I uh, get a little quick video here. And the old beautiful brewing company, Defacing Public Property. Right on. We've had a nice break. And look at this trail. Now think back a couple of days ago in the video to the no trail. And this is, uh, well, it's pretty easy. Which is good, because we've got between 8.1 and 9.1 kilometers to go, depending on what you believe, the map or the sign. Walking down the uh, fire road, and to my right, we thought was a washout. Jim discovers this sign over here. River Trail to Flint's Park, which uh, may be more scenic than the fire road, but not a clue what condition it's in. So we will continue to take the easy road out. <laughs> Sorry, I know, I know. A little scenery opening up. And uh, this is range we're walking into. We're gonna go down to the right. And on the other side will be the Dormer Pass Trail, which will come straight into the campsite area as well. So a lot of junctions and intersections here. But just uh, just down there, it's hard to see in the smoke. I think we got about 4K to the big intersection and then we'll uh, 
figure out what we're gonna do. Jim, put your pole down there, we get a little scale. A little trekking pole handle, that is a big boy. Yeah, look at that, hello. <laughs> I'm glad that's old, how about you? Very glad it's old. Oh, but wouldn't it be great on video? No. <laughs> look at this, still blood. You guys hungry yet? No. Mm, okay. Mmm. Why on earth would they have tied that antler to the tree with a big table? Though? The mysteries of the forest. <laughs> this is the Dormer River. And have we completed our planned journey? Or even plan B. We would have followed this river down from the pass, basically, to the same camping area. Follow the dormer down on the, uh, what I'll call the right-hand side. And it brings you to this bridge. And look at the old concrete out there. Holy crap. Look at that. Wow. There's the bridge I just showed you. We were gonna cross. Given some of the map layers we are using. But here we are. This has to be CR15 Stony Creek. Yeah, all brand new and bucked up. Now, we have a permit for this site in four nights. So, <coughs> excuse me. We're not going to rain on anybody's parade, that's for sure. But we're going to look around and try to find a spot to stay nearby or around here. Uh, so we can minimize our footprint and our impact, obviously. And, uh, but not, we don't want to rain on anybody's permit. And you can see there's an empty bin. There's five tent pads here. So we can safely store our food together in there. So we're going to make uh, some decisions. Oh, look, Jim, the outhouse. Yeah, make some decisions here and figure out what we're going to do. And then I'll, uh, I'll update you. So typically on longer hikes that are complicated to plan and execute, uh, you know, the night before we're finished, I sit down and I have a few notes and tips for you. And I don't really have much tonight because things have changed so much. But I will say a lack of bugs, right? Until tonight. Yeah. There's been an incredible right. lack of, of bugs. <laughs> and uh, funny that that happened tonight. All of a sudden we have bugs. But And for me, the whole summer, honestly, there have not been nearly as many bugs as I've experienced in the past. So it's kind of weird. So if you're coming out this time of year, you're probably in pretty good shape. Uh, all summer long, the Garmin weather sucked. And I'm sorry to use the term, but it was terrible. Totally unpredictable. On the Clearwater Red Deer Circuit, I was messaging these guys, can you check the weather? And Anne's like, tomorrow, chance of clouds. And, but it hadn't, and it didn't even match the Garmin weather. And if you've watched that video, you know I was trying to get to the Pipestone River and I was worried about a rain event that was being predicted. Never happened. Happen. Never happened. Never happened whatsoever. So this leads into last night. So last night we're on our plan B. Uh, we, we, we lost Scott on, uh, was it, what was it? Day three? The morning of day three. The morning of day three we lost Scott, fine. And then we made the decision, okay, we're not going to try to ford the Red Deer. We've lost Scott. Based on that, let's go down the Panther, Dormer Pass. That's our plan B. So you saw us last night. Well, we had a pretty rainy and cold day and we had a beautiful day getting warm yesterday. And we thought, you know... Let's check the weather to see what it's going to be like as we go up Dormer Pass. Because if you read the Canadian Rockies Trail Guide, you know that the section we're going to start on Dormer's Pass, pretty uh, iffy. And like, we've already had some iffy trail on the, <laughs> upper, on the upper Panther, right, as you come out of the headwaters. So, so we're checking, and Olivia, thank you, she checked, happened to be away in the States and uh, checked the uh, U.S. weather. We got that. Uh, and then we were looking for someone to check the Canadian weather. I'd bothered Evelyn the day before, so we bothered some of your friends and family. <clears throat> and they sent the weather, but then they sent the fact that you guys were back on a wildfire evac, uh, mandatory evacuation for the second time in a month. Yeah. Yeah. So we're sitting there at this conjunction of so many different trails, and the idea is like, listen. And I said to them, I said, what do you want to do? They said, we should probably get out. Well, look where we are. We're out tomorrow. And that's my point. When you plan these crazy trips that aren't point to points, have ways to get out. And this particular section of the park offered us many different opportunities to get out. And a lot of opportunity to be flexible, right? And we're even being flexible tomorrow. <coughs> so tomorrow, instead of going up this way, which, what was it, 459 meters of elevation gain over eight kilometers? Yes. Yeah, that sounds like fun. 
Uh, we're going to go down the, the Cascade Fire Road to Minnewanka, or Disneyland as I call it, mm -hmm. and um, get a ride back to Norquay and get these guys out so they can deal with that. Um, so yeah, flexibility. I think that's the key to all of these things. And having the ability to communicate. Because ah. if we hadn't had the in-reach Garmin program that Stuart has, we right. wouldn't have been able to access any of the information from our family. And we wouldn't have learned about what was going on at home and the fact that we really truly needed to be there. Right. I, mean, I suppose, <clears throat> you know, ignorance is bliss and we could have just gone on and done our thing. And we wouldn't have known until we came out. However, when we left home, things were in a lot better place than they are today or yeah. yesterday. Right. And, um, you know, we're just really wanting to get back and get some things that are important to us out of home um, and make sure that our neighbors are safe, etc. Yeah, and I've always thought about Garmin, like I have parents that are older and I have kids mm -hmm. and you know, you, if something happens, you want to know because yep. I'm going to get out of here. And I think we were pretty lucky last night that yeah. uh, we asked for some weather. Yeah. And you we know? were lucky where we were too because we had options to come out. You know, had, yeah. had we just continued on with the plan B and gone down the Panther and then up the Dormer and then maybe <clears throat> two days later, <clears throat> excuse me, um, called in and asked to see what was going on, we wouldn't have been able to get out quickly. No, no, we would have been in a much different position. And it would have so. been pretty awful to have to hike with that knowledge that you can't do anything about it. Yeah. And so as it was today, we did <clears throat> 27.6 kilometers, which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but really you're getting crazy. out tomorrow and you have cell but service and you can tomorrow. manage things and, right. and get home and maybe get organize and get what you need out of that so exactly. so that's the lesson flexibility don't be afraid to change your plans when you plan these trips for goodness sake i'll flash up on the screen the map uh, again just to show you the amount of options we have on a trip like this and uh, speaking of flexibility we're supposed to be hiking south esk lake right now <laughs> and we aren't because of the june storms and all the reports we had that would have made it impossible so we did switch it up uh, be flexible carry a communicator device. I can't stress mm -hmm. that enough. I think this proves the need for it totally. or uh, the peace of mind. Yeah, you want to get away. I hear you. But life continues whether you're out here or not. So anyway, mm -hmm. thanks for sharing that. You were really good in this, Jim. You had a lot, you had a lot to say. Feeling very talkative. <laughs> I'll wrap it up in a minute. Getting ready to wrap up day six. And uh, glad we had that chat about flexibility. I hope it made sense to you. These are remote areas and you do need to plan uh, if you need to get out. Just make a good trip plan like we had with lots of different options. And one of the options we had was going up here. That was the original plan. We were supposed to be at this campsite, as I said, in about, what, four days? And uh, then hike out over there to our cars tomorrow. But circumstances change, so we will head down. And this was my suggestion kind of today after Ann had brought it up and then said, no, let's do the other hike. I said, you know, let's get down the Cascade Fire Road to Minnewanka and uh, get a ride back to Norquay and get you guys out so you can deal with things. And I think, you know, the stress they're feeling must be absolutely, uh, well, the only thing I can relate to is the hurricanes that we evacuated from when I lived in South Carolina. And that happened three times and it is incredibly stressful. A couple were, uh, well, they're pretty scary, but it's a whole different level, quite frankly, because, uh, well, the fire's right there. So, and uh, by the way, right there, you come down off the Dormer Pass Trail. So, gorgeous night. Smoke's cleared out a little tiny bit for us, so we have a little better view. And, uh, well, that's it. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to say goodnight after 27K, <laughs> which is uh, almost a record for me this year, but uh, not quite, but it's still a long day, even if it's a fire road and it's mostly downhill. So, some quick shut-eye, and we'll get these guys out of here tomorrow. See you in the morning. Good morning, day six. What a stunner this is. Great sleep last night, a little warmer. Of course, after 27K, you're probably going to have a pretty good sleep. <laughs> Ann and Jim are going to come out this way from the campsite just to see if there's any of those, you know, Banff signs with the maps on them and stuff. And, uh, well, I'm out here saying good morning to you down the Cascade Fire Road. Uh, should be a pretty easy walk, actually, and then we'll get a, a ride back to Norquay, and uh, these guys can get organized with what's going on in their lives, which is just, uh, well, like I said, I only can relate to evacuating hurricanes, which were pretty scary, but, and this has been going on for a month with them and the stress levels, you know, for everybody that deal with this must be extremely high. You know, we talk a lot about, uh, well, 
about being out here in the smoke and how inconvenient it is. Well, I mean, really, compared to what folks go through when they're in it, it's, it's nothing, really. We, it's not even comparable. So, And I was thinking, too, about our talk last night about options. I mean, if we were on South Esk Lake Trail right now, which we were supposed to be, we'd be at South Esk Lake. And at least three nights from the car because of trail conditions. So that was a good call. And then, of course, if we had stayed on our original plan, I think this is the day we probably would have been crossing the, uh, trying to cross the Red Deer River in Plan A, but certainly getting ourselves uh, ready for Dormer Pass. So we would have been out there even further. So you know what? Sometimes it's serendipity. Check in the weather, and you find out there's an emergency back home for these guys. So that's a good thing. Anyway, another good thing. It should be a pretty easy trail that way. One quick look back from where we've come. The old bridge for the old road. Look at how the channels have shifted. Jim was just mentioning that. Like, I mean, when they shift, they shift. And of course, Dormer Pass up that way. This is a stunning spot. We had the place completely to ourselves last night. And this is prime season in Banff. And, and this is bike access. So it's kind of shocking, really. Uh, it's a gorgeous little campsite. Give you a little, uh, yeah, a little look here. So you can see the Mount Norquay Road's 20K, 20.2 on the sign. We we had a little less than that from our calculations, but there's the intersection. So the original plan was to go that way um, on our 10-day trip on the last day and back to the car. We actually debated doing that this morning, but uh, this is a much better solution for a lot of reasons. So off we go. So we decided to go right. As you, if you look at the map in the direction we're coming, you know, you can, it's like a big oval. And we want to see the warden's cabin. So uh, we've come down to the right. This doesn't really lengthen the trip at all. In fact, it might shorten it slightly. Well, oh. okay. Any, <laughs> anybody bring any WD-40? Beautiful little tunnel-like trail. And uh, coming in now, I'm sure, to the cabin. Yeah, because there's the other fence, of course. And, uh, oh, there's the pins. Beautiful. So the cabin, this is a lovely spot for the horses. Cabin's obviously beyond this large horse pen area. This is gorgeous. You think, oh, the fire road, I don't want to go there. Take this little extra cut through. And you get to see this place of beauty. Look at this. This is one of the nicer ones, actually. Look at this porch. Look at <laughs> Oh, wow. Look at the porch. And the logs they used. The trees. Wow. Picnic table. Beautiful. That there, that's uh, batteries for the, uh, for the solar. So... Pardon that, nice little shed here, and there's a black. Let's go look. The Carltons. Ed Carlton returned from England as a vet from World War II with his bride, Dorothy. Ed became a park warden, and the family moved to various districts of Banff Park. They lived at Stoney, which is here, from 49 to 53. Dorothy taught her son, Michael, homeschool. She took her new baby in the pram along a dusty fire road instead of in the streets of London. <laughs> The Carltons represent many warden families who lived in isolated districts in the national parks before centralization. And when I think of Jim's grandfather, this is exactly how they lived. Wow. And, and wow. Morning, ladies. How are you? What you gonna do? Couple of, couple of young ladies on the left, mama. On the right, yeah. All right, off we go, let's go. Getting pretty close to the campsite where we're gonna take a break at the, about, about the eight kilometer mark. And look at that view, that's something. Woo! Little junction here with a trail to the right. This trail will take us down to Cascade Bridge Camp, where we're gonna have a little break. And uh, I'll be able to show you a bit of that as well. 
hope you're toddling on through, just stay left. Let's go see this guy. Coming through here with some tent pads with some people. I won't show the folks. Oh, we just passed the outhouse. She's a smelly one. <laughs> we'll continue down this way to uh, find the eating area. Bear Box is an eating area over here, which is where we're gonna stop. I'm gonna see what we see on the sign. Maybe it has a map. No, <laughs> but that's okay. Pretty straightforward. Break time and then we're gonna cross the big bridge and it's a big bridge. We had a lovely, lovely break here. And here is a map. Cascade Bridge campsite. Kind of nice, eh? I like that. Yeah. Oh, that there. I, you know what? I saw a trail going over here. So number five, pretty secluded, I would say. But you don't get the white noise of this beautiful river, the Cascade. And we're about to go over the bridge. And it's a biggie. Oh my goodness! Landscaped and everything. <laughs> Look at this. Woo! Sure beats that log we tried to use back there, doesn't it? Yeah. Look at this feat of engineering. Wow. That's the thing, you know, when you go out really remote places and come back to this. Huh. This is beautiful. I'll show you the river in a sec. Little shot up river. If you'll just let me pan around slowly. Little shot down river. Wow, beautiful place again. 6K from your car, come on in. Horse poop, why am I talking about that? Well, we just met four park staff, young folks with their full backpacks on, or you know, beside them, they're out getting rid of an invasive species. You'll never guess what it is. Caraway seeds. Really good in an Italian sausage or some nice rye bread, but not good in the park apparently. So they're out here picking it by hand. <laughs> anyway, it's all brought in by the horses. Pretty fascinating really. And edible. And edible. Here's this intersection. We're gonna bear left. I don't wanna do that, do you? No, I didn't think so. Oh, yeah, they do ski here. You were, I was a groomer you saw out there. All right, so we're gonna loop around this way, actually, and try to get out to the road. Find our ride. We're gonna wrap it up right over there. Well, six days out of 10, we lost a man. <laughs> All of that, how's the hike? Uh, it was amazing. We saw some incredible places and uh, experienced some uh, interesting events. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, can you top that? Probably not. <laughs> Certainly interesting. Yeah. Uh, our first visit to Banff National Park was uh, quite enlightening just to see the difference in terrain from, from Jasper, which we're used to and the trail conditions and the cabin styles and stuff. Uh. Yeah, it was great. I mean, uh, be flexible, be uh, live in the moment. And we did see some pretty amazing stuff. I mean, the Panther River area needs more exploration mm -hmm. and um, North Fork Pass, I that thought was, was amazing. even though the weather was terrible, I thought was pretty amazing. And for me, the highlight honestly was coming down to see the headwaters of the Panther River. That was just like coming out of the mist. That was really remote. You know, it felt very wild. And so. I don't like heights, so I was really happy it was misty because I couldn't see what I was getting. <laughs> she couldn't see how high it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was halfway down. It. Oh, any questions or comments, as always, leave them below. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you next time.